This lesson is about um, car parks and office buildings. Yeah, pretty interesting stuff. Yeah, we'll just get into an example and it'll, it'll show where we're at. So calculate the area per car park required for this uh, 90 degree approach angle. So the 90 degree approach angle means we're coming in here, turning at 90 degrees to get into our car park. Okay, so what we're trying to calculate is area per car park. So what we'll need to find is what's this total area that's being used for the car park and then divide it by the number of car parks there are. Okay, so the diagram seems to be a bit dodgy. This is supposed to be C over here. Okay, so we're going to find the total area and it's essentially just a big rectangle. So we know that A is 5, B is 6 and this is A again, 5. So we know that the base is 16 meters okay, and I know C is 2.5. So I've got 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2 2.5. 2 okay, so all up I'll have 10 meters there. So the total area that's used, it's a rectangle, length times width. Okay, 10 times 16 or 16 times 10, either way, 160 meters squared for those eight car parks. So the area per car park will be the total area used and we'll divide it by the number of car parks. Yeah, so that 160 divided through by eight will have 20 meters squared. Okay, so I can write some statement down here. The area per car park is 20 meters squared. Okay, so that's one example. What about for a 60 degree approach angle? Okay, similar, similar to what we see in the staff car park. Okay, in this case, we're trying to find, well, pen yet? Yep, trying to find what's the area of this shape that we're using for those six car parks. Okay, um, so what do we know? All right, I've got A here again. It tells us these little distances are all 2.3 and A is 5.4. So the way we'll do it is just break it up into smaller shapes. So I'll call this area one. This is also shape one. I'll call this shape two. Okay, doing um, 2.3 times three. Okay, I know that this, this whole distance is going to be 6.9 meters. Okay, and we can label around all of these parts as well. All right, so I always do the easiest thing first. Okay, I'm going to find the area of shape number two, okay, which is the rectangle. Draw what this rectangle looks like. It's 5.3 meters on the bottom and 6.9 meters high. Okay, we've got 36.57 meters squared. Okay, the hard part is going to be the area of shape one, okay, which pretty much looks something like this, where I've got 6.9, 6.9, and this distance between those two sides is 5.4. Okay, so I can think of this as A, this is B, and this is H. So the area is a half, A plus B, H. 
Okay, slot these values in. A half. 6.9 plus 6.9 times 5.4. I'll get the area of shape 1. A 37.26. Okay, my total area used. be two lots of area one plus one lot of area two. Okay, remember because I've got these two lots of area, of that first area. Okay, sub these in two times thirty seven point two six plus thirty six point five seven and I'll get the total area that was used. One 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 point oh nine meters squared. I have found the total area that's been used uh, for those car parks. I have one, two, three, four, five, six car parks. Okay, so my area per car park again total area divided by number of car parks. A one 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 point oh nine divided by my six car parks. I have eighteen point five two meters squared per car park, and I write that in there somewhere for the sixty degree approach angle, an area of eighteen point five two. I mean, squared is required. Okay, so I could compare that to the 90 degree one, which required 20 meters squared. Okay, and we could say, oh, we have a saving of like 1.5 meters squared per car park. All right, moving on. Okay, across the page, the final thing for the term, which is office spaces and lighting and air conditioning and things like this. Okay, we've got first a thing about um, workstations and the minimum workspace area is defined somewhere as 2.1 meters by 2.1 meters yeah that's just the fact that you you provide in in textbook and what percentage of the minimum workspace area do teachers at canterbury college have so gone down to end block and i've measured the desks okay, they're typically 1.5 meters long and there's 2.5 meters of space um, back there. Okay, so let's calculate the CC workspace area. Okay, it's just a rectangle, nothing too exciting. 1.5 by 2.5. Okay, we've got 3.75 meters squared as our area. Okay, let's compare that to the minimum workspace area. Hey, remember minimum workspace area is 2.1 by 2.1 meters. it should have 4.41 meters squared. Okay, so it doesn't look like those poor teachers down in Enbox staff room have the minimum workspace area as defined um, by this uh, textbook or standard. Okay, this is what percentage of the minimum workspace do they have? Okay, so we've got a part divided by a whole. So percentage of the minimum. Okay, is the CC area divided by the minimum area times 100 to make it into a percentage. So my 3.75, divide that by 4.41 and then convert it into a percentage. Okay, I'll do that. Hopefully I get something less than 100. If I don't, I'm in trouble. 
Okay, and I'll make sure I make some statement down here as well. Okay, some something to indicate um, how outraged we all are. Okay, the CC staff have 85% of the minimum workspace area. Okay, so a lot of these problems are, are just finding areas of rectangles and and comparing to something else. All right, let's have a look at lighting and air conditioning. Okay, again, we'll always be provided with some fact. Okay, for starters, 35 watts per meter squared is required to light the room. Okay, so let's have a look at this problem. So again, our room is nine meters by seven meters. Okay, so we know that the area is 63 meters squared. Okay, let's have a look at the minimum lighting required. Okay, it'll be the area of the room times the number of watts per meter squared required. So this 63 meter squared times this 13.5 watts per meter squared. So we need 850 0.5 watts. Okay, so we would um, think about oh, how many fluorescent lights would we need. Okay, so the number of uh, lights will be the lighting required divided by 36, okay, because each fluorescent light is going to give us 36 watts of light. We need 850.5 in total. Okay, so divide this through by 36. I'll need 23.625 lights. Okay, so I'm going to round this up to 24. Okay, so I'll need need at least 23.62 lights therefore need 24 lights in total okay so your job now is to have a look around the classroom and make sure that there's actually 24 lights there if there isn't then i would make a recommendation need to um, need to put more lights in there for it to be lit sufficiently okay, the final one um, air conditioning okay, 120 watts per meter squared is required to cool a room sufficiently calculate the capacity of an air conditioner to cool this room so remember our room again nine meters by seven meters so we've got an area of this room of 63 meters squared okay so the air conditioning that we need will be whatever the area of the room is times the 125 watts per meter squared. We've got 63 meters squared times it by 125. This will tell me how many watts I need. So I need 7875 watts. To cool the room. Okay, make sure you read the question properly. Okay, it says in kilowatts. Okay, kilo just means like a thousand. So in the same way I would convert meters to kilometers, this will be 7.875 kilowatts. Okay, from here to here is just dividing by a thousand. Okay, to convert to kilowatts. Okay, most of the questions will give you enough information to be able to, I guess, fumble your way through a solution. Okay, even if you don't really know anything about air conditioning or lighting or, or workspace areas. Try these questions and then we'll be on to review for the final exam.